Hi, what we have today is a smart lock. It's from Yuki. With this little thing you can open your door from from the outside without the need of a key. I think that's the definition of a smart lock. <laughs> this I have several of these. Um, here's the second one and I have some more. The issue with this one, that's the first version, but the uh, second version has the same issue. And there's also a third version, but I um, have one of those. Is here you can hear the motor is the motor is turning directly. That's wrong. Normally it's like this, so you could spin the key to unlock it from from the inside. I don't know in case of a fire or something. If you have um, closed it down or the battery died or something, you can just turn it and move the key. So that's not working. And the signature failure with these Nuki devices is that the little motor um, which uh, handles this latch is just broken. So I've done this mod before, so I replaced it. My very first device where I've done this modification. So I think it's pretty messed up from the inside. It's a while ago. So please don't blame me for this. And um, yeah, that was a motor that I have laying around. So I have no idea how, how old this motor was. But I got some replacements from, I think it was AliExpress. I will, I, if I find this uh, motors, I will. Uh, Put a link in the description. But they look oh, they look like this. So they're pretty tiny motors and pretty cheap. So let's yeah, you can see I have label is for Nuki, so um, <laughs> I know those are especially for those smart locks. So let's open it up and have a look inside if the motor died again. This, by the way, is not the motor. This motor is for the for the main, uh, yeah, for the main turning. But this motor is just for latching the gear to release or, or lock this. Oh, or more to say, to to engage the motor wheels, you know. So we have to remove this. But first, we need to disassemble this whole thing here. Otherwise, we can't get through here. So let's do that. And this will pop up. Here are some rings. Those are for the button action. Then we need to release those screws. Now we have to be a little bit careful because there is a ribbon cable. So we need to remove this. That's fine. Now we can remove this metal part. No, not quite sure, but I think we have to remove the whole thing. and our gears. Let's put it to the side for a moment. And here you see the disengaging and engaging mechanism. So normally I think this is engaged. So you or the system can turn with the other motor this knob and this little motor can pull this down so it's spring loaded and disengage it and I think or hope 
because it's not working anymore, that this motor is again gone. Or well, at least not working properly. Um, those screws are not completely original because I bought this just in part, so there was everything flying around. <laughs> so I'm a bit familiar with this little device. But there were screws missing, so I have to improvise. So here's the spring in. We'll think about this later on. So now let's check. This motor is still still okay. So normally the motor is shorted. So let's see if it's if it is shorted. And as you can hear, it's 14 ohms. Let's check what a new motor has for a resistance. No, I'm confused. Let me grab another one, but it's much less, so maybe, okay, okay, ah. that is driving me crazy. Just for clarification, the two ohms range is totally fine. If you get a very high ohm reading or no reading at all, then the motor is gone. Okay, they are all in the two ohms range. This one is in the 14 ohms range. What can we do? Uh, I think I will try to give um, one and a half volts to the motor and let's see if it's turning. Sorry that you can't see my lab power supply at the moment. I need to get a solution for this, maybe an extra camera or something. If you have some ideas, let me know. No recommendations. Now let's first check a new motor. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, you can't see it. Let me put some tape around it. So this is turning. Now this baby here. There's a gear on so you normally can see something. Let me try to... As you can see there is nothing turning at all here. There's our gear. There are our contacts. Oh no, it's it's working, sorry. But let's replace it anyway because as you can see this one over here is really old. I have no idea where I've got this from. But um, if you get this problem, I'm I'm hundred percent sure that this motor is gone. I've done this two or three times. Um, maybe my reassembling wasn't correct because you have some some room or some wiggling to put this in and I think sometimes it's just jamming up but let's do it anyway because I'm not pretty convinced that this motor will last for too long so let's try to remove it those cables here are also very brittle maybe I replace those also but 
check if they're working fine. If not, we will place these either. Okay, fume extractor. So the wick. Because it's lettered solar, it's very easy. So when you're doing this, remember to put some fresh lettered solar on those points to desolder it more easily. Okay, that was easy. Now the only thing left is this little tiny wire here. This one. I think it's for rounding. It's still very hot. Surprise, surprise. Okay, and here is our our modo. Let me grab it with some pliers. Okay, we need this gear. So I put it to the side. Now let's grab one of our new motors and do the same steps in reverse. That means, okay, it's the same direction you see those lines. That's our old one. Here we have our where our wire was, and here we have some markings. So this one is plus, so this is minus. Okay, great. So we need to put it like this. That's fine, let's step down. So I think this should work, or well, it could work. Let's check with continuity. If you extract the rough, so that's our case, and I touch the other side, it's Get in contact. That's good. Nice. Okay, okay. What about these crappy cables? Yeah, I think they are gone. So if you do this repair, I can tell you those <laughs> those cables are too weak. Just do your favor and um, replace them completely, so you won't have this hassle. Here are our cable. Okay, so let's begin with... Uh, I think that's not the perfect PCB holder in this, in this case. How about... This thing. Say hello to Mr. Octopus. Where is my tweezer? So again, human instructor.
Unfortunately, I have no heat shrink for this. Huh. Let me quickly heat shrink it. Yeah, it's not working that perfect, but I think for this little job it should be sufficient. Okay, so let's remove this. No cable. So the left one, well the yellow one was from the left side, but the right one, the blue one. I also released my mistake, of course. Let's put some fresh solar again here. This will help her use a solar wick. So we need new wires. So how about these silicon wires that are lying around? They should be sufficient. Where is the yellow one? Just for length comparison? A comparison? Okay, perfect. The good thing about silicon wire is you can just use your fingernails and pull it off. Yeah, let me wet the wires shortly. Now the same with the blue wire. A little IPA scrub. Man, that's like new. Some other would say it's better than factory. Now back to this friend over here. Nice. Okay, now let's see if we could bring it together to test it at least. Um, there is one issue with those motors because the original one got a flat portion, so you need some kind to drill in this a bit because you can fit it over here and just press fit it, but it works. Read switch or something? I think it's a read switch. A read switch. We'll go between this here. And the cable will go in this channel here. Should go in this channel. Hopefully it will. Um, let's push it a bit. Get it in place. Good. Okay, well, let's 
fine. So far, nice. And now I'm just thinking for the for one test, if we put the battery pack in here, the motor should spin for a short amount of time at least. Let's try this. That looks promising. Good. So that should be successful. So now let's try to put it back together. That's a little bit the tricky part of the whole thing. I think um, this little spring is also a replacement of mine that I am laying around. Oh man, this IPA is always... <laughs> make your fingers look terrible. So this assembly is easy if you know how to do it. But remember that's just for version 1, version 2 was different. You have here a little pin. It's very hard to see. I'm not sure it's possible here we will fit the spring remember this spring is too long I guess and it's not the original but yeah it was just in parts um, then you can put this thing here So you have this little thing, it goes directly to the side, then you can push the whole thing down. Now it's spring loaded. Now you hold it a bit down, put this gear, let it go, put it in between, push it down, and now we have to use our motor. Maybe we should have done this first. No, you can. I, I can't. And just put this one. That's that, that's what I mean with the alignment. I'm not hundred percent sure if the direction is important or not. The direction. Let's say the position of this. So I will try to align it. But it's just centered in some way. Then put this in between. Push, then it clips in. And now we just have to marry those components. So you will put. It's a little bit tricky. Sometimes you need to angle it a bit. Now it's inside. Now you can let go. Now it's connected with the motor in some way. Yeah, that should be fine. And we need to put this this thing in here. The motor. And I'm always a bit struggling. With the right direction. I think it's that's right. Those are all the cables on one side, so it should be good. And if I remember correctly, those cables should go like 
behind this little plastic flap. But unfortunately, the new cables are a bit thicker, so yeah, it could be a little bit trickier to get it in. Now, our main assembly. So, what I would like to do is you have the rods in here, just put them out and put them put them here, makes it easier for the assembly. And now we need to puzzle a bit. It's a bit tricky and but it's doable. So the easiest thing I found out is that you straighten a bit this ribbon cable and first try to get it through this hole here. This here. If you've done this, just try to get it in completely. Sounds good. And let's screw in. And let's try again with the batteries. If the assembly is latching correctly, maybe we have to take it again apart and do you still remember where I was talking about the middle part of this little um, gear where we put the motor in? Maybe we have to wiggle around this a bit so that it works in the end. But let's check. So I put it in. And see what it's doing. Yeah, but I think it's not right. The upcoming part I will just fast forward. I was fault finding the issue with the trial and error approach, where the gear get pushed in the wrong direction and in the end I found two issues. First, the cable of the motor were swapped, so I just chained them back to fix the wrong gear engage movement. During this process I also replaced the main motor cables with the silicon ones. Second, the motor sometimes jammed itself up. The reason for this are my replacement screws. I ended up with removing one of the three and losing the other two a tiny bit to get more freedom of movement. But now let's go on with the final reassemble process. Good so far. Okay, and let's put in the screws.
So be careful, this is just working in one direction. As you can see, you need to get it right, otherwise it won't fit. And be careful not to um, put it in too hard, otherwise it will break the plastic. You have this thing, that's where the key is later going in. So you have to put it this way. That the key will be supported later on. So now you just have to put this big thing in. Like so. Perfect. Let's pull this screw in. Let's put it out. Then you can push or put the springs in those holes. I think that's also a little different between the new key models, if I remember correctly. And then you have to align those pins with the screws. Pull it back together. And you should be able to press the ring and feel the buttons underneath it. So the last step is to check what are our screws. These are our right screws. And screw it back. Okay. Good, put this thing back on. Perfect, and as you can see, we can turn it freely. And if we put a battery in, no, let's first um, put this thing back in. So you have those rubber things that will go on beside the motor. To stabilize it a bit, okay, put it in. That's good. Put our battery pack in so it's turnable. It's turning. I will abort it because it will go endless. But there is no screw, uh, no screw, because <laughs> there's no key or something with what could stop it. And now it spins freely. Yes, so we'll give it a little clean and then I see you at the door. Thank you very much for your patience and watching till the end. If you like what I am doing, please consider liking this video and subscribe to my channel. This would help me a lot. Oh, and now to the answer of all questions. Can we fix it? Yes, we could. Have a heart for broken devices and give them a second chance. Hope to see you soon. Stay healthy and until next time. Bye.